One of my favorite outfits from Breath of the Wild has to be the Royal Guards of Hyrule Castle. This armor was introduced in the second DLC pack, The Champion's Ballad, with all three pieces of the set being found within the castle. Unfortunately, like other DLC outfits, it can't be upgraded at the Fairy Fountains, so while it's my favorite, I don't wear it too often unless having a high defense isn't my priority. The Royal Guards were people tasked with protecting the royal family of Hyrule. While the game barely mentions them, aside from a brief look in the final Champion's Ballad memory, their weapons are infamous among the fanbase. There are many weapons to choose from in Breath of the Wild, and what the player uses depends on its overall stats and the enemies fought. Lizelfos are quick to move and dodge attacks, so instead of using a hard-hitting but slow weapon, the spear is a better choice. Some of the most common weapons found in Hyrule are those wielded by the royal family's army. Broadswords, claymores, spears, shields, and bows. Among the selection, there exist different tiers. Soldier, Knight, and Royal. The weapons wielded by the soldiers of the army are weakest, with the royal set on the other side of the spectrum, being the most powerful of the bunch. It's not uncommon to see a player's inventory filled with these, as both their attack power and durability make them incredibly useful. But there is one other set of weapons which fall under this category a fourth tier found only in Hyrule Castle, those being of the Royal Guard series. The Royal Guard weapons are reskins of the Royal set and have the highest attack power of all four tiers. With that said, why do they have an infamous reputation among players? There are two main reasons. The first is that they are incredibly scarce, only appearing in Hyrule Castle. If one wanted to stock up on them, they'd have to wait through several Blood Moons to fill their inventory. The second and most important reason is that while they have the highest attack, their durability is extremely low. Even the description of these weapons point out their impracticality in battle. Aside from acting as a sort of collector's item, the Royal Guard weapons are barely used nor needed in playthroughs. Most people will stick with the Royal Guard set, or even better, stock up on Savage Lionel weapons. So the question is, why even bother adding them in the first place? What's important about these weapons isn't the stats, or efficiency in battle, but the story behind their creation, a topic which we will delve into today. The best place to start looking is at the description of the gear itself. Most mention that the weapons were created with ancient technology. Impa tells us of the events which transpired 10,000 years ago, how Hyrule was a highly advanced civilization thanks to the technological prowess of the Sheikah. The tribe was responsible for the construction of the shrines, towers, divine beasts, and guardians. While little is known about this technology, we get a closer look at materials such as the giant ancient core, described as a giant energy crystal made using lost ancient technology. Furthermore, if we look at the description of the Guardian weapons often wielded by scouts, they too reference an ancient technology, the very same as the machine parts. And it makes sense, the Sheikah would have been responsible for both the structures and weapons. Therefore, is the ancient technology used to build the shrines and guardians the same as the type referenced in the Royal Guard gear? It's very likely, as all weapon descriptions name drop the Sheikah as the creators. But what's with their low durability? It seems rather strange, especially if these weapons were made by the same group responsible for the Shrines and Guardians, technology which has existed for 10,000 years. And why even enlist the help of the Sheikah to create what's simply an upgraded version of the Royal Weapons? Unless there's some sort of ulterior motive here. The description for the Royal Guard Sword has one other detail worth mentioning. According to the Hyrule Compendium, it's a Sheikah-made replica of the sword that seals the darkness. In other words, a replica of the Master Sword. Now, while it's labeled as a replica, it shares neither the blade's durability nor evil-destroying properties. The only time this blade is implied to have connections to the Master Sword is through its description and, surprisingly, the name. The names of the one-handed swords are Soldier's Broadsword, Knight's Broadsword, Royal Broadsword, and the Royal Guard's sword. Despite being a higher tier of the same weapon, for some reason the broad is dropped from the name. Perhaps because the Master Sword isn't referred to as the Master Broadsword. 
Whatever the intentions were, it's clear that the experiment didn't go so well. While its power does exceed that of the royal gear, the weapon is very brittle. But this knowledge greatly helps with solving the mystery of the royal guard's weapons. There was an attempt to recreate the Master Sword by using the Sheikah's ancient technology. And if that's the case, the source of the Master Sword's power must be connected in some way to the ancient energy powering the Shrines and Guardians. Delving further, while Calamity Ganon is vulnerable to any weapon, the same can't be said with his other form, Dark Beast Ganon. You're expected to use the Bow of Light for this battle, since Zelda gives it to you moments before the face-off, however, it's not the only weapon the player can use. Others include the Twilight Bow, Master Sword Projectiles, and Ancient Arrows. The Twilight Bow is the very same used by Princess Zelda to stun Ganondorf in the horseback battle of Twilight Princess. It's essentially that game's version of the Bow of Light often seen in the Zelda series. There appears to be a pattern here. Three of the four weapons which can damage Dark Beast Ganon are those of Sacred Power. Two Bow of Lights and the Master Sword, a weapon forged with the intent of slaying evil. If the Ancient Arrows fall under this list, it's very likely their power comes from a similar source. Is the Ancient Energy from Breath of the Wild considered sacred, much like the sword that seals the darkness? It would give new meaning to the term Divine Beast, and it explains why the ancient technology responsible for the creation of the Ancient Arrows and other weapons was used to make a Master Sword replica. The same can be said for all the Royal Guard weapons. In fact, most of them are said to have been designed to oppose the Calamity, very similar to the purpose of the Master Sword. And there's a very good reason to make these weapons. The thing is, while the Master Sword is arguably the most powerful weapon in the series, its power can only be wielded by one, the hero of that era, whether it be the Hero of Time, Winds, Light, or the Wild. The royal family wanted the power, which could only be used by one, to be wielded by many, strengthening the Hyrulean army. In theory, this sounds like a great idea. But you'd essentially be equipping every guard with the Master Sword. And the royal family has been known for making... questionable decisions, to put it lightly. This isn't the first time we've seen a Master Sword replica, either. The Lost Woods of A Link to the Past is filled with fake versions of the blade. When you battle Gramps in A Link Between Worlds, he too has a Master Sword. It's not too surprising that these experiments with the Royal Guard gear failed. I mean, we're still talking about the Master Sword. If it was that easy to copy its abilities, the blade wouldn't be so special. Before its power was fully awakened, it had to be bathed in the Sacred Flames and blessed by Zelda. Something else other weapons lack is a sword spirit similar to Fi, things which can't necessarily be replicated with ancient technology. Coincidentally, there are two other weapons within the compendium said to be forged with ancient technology, which don't fall under the Guardian, Royal Guard, or Ancient Weapons category. The Edge of Duality and Eightfold Lawnblade. Unlike the Royal Guard set, these swords are much more durable. Question is, if the Sheikah were capable of making weapons such as these, why is the Royal Guard set so fragile? It is true that the Guardian Sword, Shield, Spear, and Ancient Battle Axe are also fragile, however, each weapon underwent upgrades to become more durable with the plus and plus plus variants. Our answer to this question comes from where the player can find the Royal Guard's weapons, at Hyrule Castle, and only Hyrule Castle. Meanwhile, gear such as the Eightfold Bomb Blade and Edge of Duality are found within Sheikah Shrines. This includes the Guardian gear, which dates all these weapons back to 10,000 years ago. In fact, Mascotia wields a Guardian Sword++ plus plus in the face-off against Link, suggesting that these weapons were wielded by the Sheikah against Ganon 10,000 years ago. The same cannot be said for the Royal Guard weapons, since they only appear within the castle and nowhere else. The most likely explanation is that, unlike other weapons made from ancient technology, these were created much later. Perhaps shortly before the Great Calamity. I believe that the Royal Guard weapons were the product of present-day Sheikah attempting to recreate what their ancestors made 10,000 years ago. While many of the relics were still hidden away or not yet activated, records of that technology had been uncovered and used to study the Sheikah's creations. And the royal family did have access to some of this ancient technology, such as the Guardians. So experimenting with that same technology to create new weapons isn't outside the realm of possibility. This could also be why the Royal Guard weapons are more powerful, yet break easily. 
Its power is too much for that weapon to contain, which shatters it after only a number of strikes. Chances are these weapons could have been upgraded, similar to the ones held by Guardian Scouts, however two factors prevented the royal family from doing so. Lack of understanding how the ancient technology worked, and more importantly, time. What the Sheikah had done with the Guardian weapons 10,000 years ago couldn't be replicated by the royal family because their time was cut short by the Great Calamity. Development of the Royal Guard weapons came to a halt, and they became collector's items sought out by many. It wasn't until a hundred years later that the technology was perfected by Robbie, with the creation of ancient weapons such as the bow and blade saw. These weapons dealt an extra 50% damage when used against guardians. Weapons of both high durability and the power to oppose the calamity. While they weren't at the level of the Master Sword, the time and effort put into the Royal Guard gear was merely a stepping stone in creating the ideal weapons for combating the Calamity. Ones which even surpass those made by the Sheikah thousands of years ago. Thank you all for watching yet another video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. You usually don't get too much lore from weapon descriptions, and that's why I find the Royal Guard's gear so interesting. I mean, when you describe something as a replica of the most powerful sword in existence, you can't help but question the origins of said weapon. The usual links to my Patreon and Discord server are down below. And remember, I do have a Twitter if you feel so inclined to follow me there. I've been Nintendo Black Crisis, and I will see you all in the next video.